广播听什么？是广场舞大妈的小苹果，八零后的周董小公举，还是年轻人越来越追捧的各大网络电台？收自本厅糖宋广播女子，远在大洋彼岸的美国人民也在一系列广播连续剧当中如痴如醉。在美国最受欢迎的广播节目当中，有一个声音陪伴了全美人民十五年。Okay, America, prepare to have your life changed. 现在他自立门户，带着瞬间窜红的新节目强势来袭。看美国广播偶像 Alex b l u m b e r g 如何打造全球最棒媒体公司之一 Gimlet。欢迎收看《创业美国》第二季，跟随一家，让我们再次踏上探访美国创新企业的新旅程吧。马上呢就要见 Alex 了，心情有点激动，因为他是我非常欣赏和崇拜的一个同行。那看过我文章的朋友也知道呢，我去年就开始听他们的节目。那因为他们非常的写实，而且有点真人秀的风格，很快呢我也成了他的粉丝。那这档节目呢，不但啊是在创业圈很火，而且呢这个美国大众呢也非常的喜欢。短短的几个月的时间，他就成为了订阅量过百万，在 Podcast 的排行榜上进入前十的好节目。I'm Alex Bloomberg. Where for years I reported on business and the economy. It was a great gig. Alex Bloomberg， 前美国国家公共广播电台 NPR 制片人和主持人，他主持的广播节目《This American Life》美国生活，长期占据着全美的广播热播频段，伴随了美国人民十五年时间。看，这位来自德州的大叔到了家也不愿意下车，我就在车里听完这集再进家门吧。还有，这位来自纽约的的哥说，乘客们因为听得开心，还会多给我一点小费呢。<笑>然而，二零一四年夏天 ，Alex 却离开了 NPR 和过百万的粉丝，自立门户创建了 Podcast 公司 Gimlet， 并推出了记录自己创业过程的广播节目，取名 Startup。创业。The podcast, podcast mini series documenting the launching of my podcast company is the business origin story you never actually heard. 啊，那现在我们就到了 Brooklyn， 嗯，就是 Gamble 公司呢总部的所在地。那现在跟我再看看他们公司到底长什么样。Oh, yeah. Hi, Alex. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you have now? I feel it's much bigger than last time I,、um, I was here. We have、uh, we have twenty twenty people now. Twenty. Wow. Yeah. So and then probably there's another five or so in, in, this year. So spending. Yeah. yeah. When did you release the、uh, first episode? Uh, it was September of 2014. Wow, you、yeah. remembered all the dates yeah, very yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, September 5th. Yeah. yeah. So it it just naturally became a hit. So so podcasts, I think, I think podcasts to become a hit, they have to、yeah. do a couple of things. First, they have to like, they have to stand out、yeah. in some way.、Mm-hmm. They have to connect to some kind of audience, you know, that's that's、mm-hmm. there for them. And then they need a little some kind of bump, some kind of publicity bump.、Um, And so with startup, I, you know, I was still working at This American Life, and I, my boss Ira, I said like I have this show that I think will be work will be good. So let me let me play it for you. And so I played it for Ira, and he was like, oh, I really like it. We might want to put it on This American Life. And I was like, well, that'd be great. So then we played it on This American Life, and that got us a big bump. So yes, you are listening to the first episode of a podcast mini series I'm making about the starting of my podcast company. I've been recording pitches to investors, difficult negotiations with my co-founder, tense conversations with my wife. I'm calling this miniseries "Startup," and I'm in the middle of things right now. I have no idea how this all ends. What is your definition of a good show? I'm glad you asked.、Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I.、Uh, the first is that, like, the first is. Honesty, like like authenticity, like I think you can hear when people are wrestling with, with when their emotion is genuine,、mm-hmm. and so to the extent that you can provide genuine emotion.、Yeah. Second thing, people like 
like podcasts are great at stories. And then I think the third thing is that it's like companionship. Like when you're listening to a podcast, you're, the people on the podcast, they feel like um, they're your friends, you know? Like when I listen to the podcast that I like, I feel like I know those people better than I do. I feel like they're my friends. Jin do you miss NPR? I left in spring of 2014. It's just a bigger organization. Mm -hmm. And so there was a big opportunity yeah. to make more podcasts. You yeah. know? And then it was just sort of like that we didn't need to sort of like worry about the radio. We didn't need to worry about radio stations. All we needed to do was put them on iTunes yeah. and have people listen to them and that would be a great business. And yeah. I feel like what I'm doing right now I would not have been able to do with an NPR. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just so much more flexibility and, and we can move so much yeah. more quickly and sort of like, you know, if we want to do a project, we can just sort of like move on it right away. It was just sad to say goodbye. NPR is like, it's been around for a while now. It's almost 50 years, and so it's, and it's built this reputation, and it has this tradition of very, you know, of like excellent journalism. And so I miss being part of that. When I came and told the team that I was leaving, I cried. It was very sad. Everybody cried. No, it was sad. Very sad. This is an NBC News special report. In the Midwest, the NPR so you think podcast is very different from radio? It's not very different in yeah. that the same things are important to radio and podcast. Like you want somebody who's a good host, you want to tell good stories, you want to be true, you know, sure. all those things are true. Just that the, the programming can be a little bit more challenging. It's the difference between on demand, on demand and yeah. clicking through. It doesn't need to be exactly 30 minutes long or exactly an hour long. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you can trust that somebody will have heard the episode before they change the they change what you are able to do on the, on the content side. Do you listen to podcasts? Uh, just recently, yes. Uh, yeah, occasionally. Sometimes, yeah, the odd time. How long do you spend each day on podcast? Not a lot, 30 to 45 minutes. Probably for like a half hour to a 45 minute clip. Just to kind of you know meditate when I have some quiet times on myself. It's just the freedom to pick it up whenever you want to listen. I like cereal. Uh, yeah, I, I listen to that. I just think it's cool. <laughs> and it was really well done. Okay, you good to go? Without truth, there can be no justice. Serial, this program also appeared on NPR, is a This really American Life's one of the generations of unknown murder cases. For the last year, I've spent every working day trying to figure out where a high school kid was for an hour after school one day in 1999. 纪录片的真实叙事手法加上扑朔迷离的案件疑点，让它成为Podcast历史上最受欢迎的广播节目，至今还没有节目能够超越它。I loved it. Yeah. I listened. I devoured it. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And so, do you think is success means the podcast is entering new kind of age? Yeah. When I uh, was going around, you know, pitching this idea to yeah. investors, the idea of my company, um, I would tell them like, yeah, podcasting will be big. You know, yeah. and like we could in, in in you know in five or ten years we could see audiences in the millions. Yeah. I would say, you know, but I was thinking it was five or ten years from now, <laughs> and then Serial comes along and it gets an audience in the you know it gets an audience in the millions immediately. So it it made it it happened much more quickly than I thought it would happen. Yeah. But yeah, so no, it's it's changed everything for us. Serial 都火成这样了 ，Podcast 的前景看起来一片大好，可是 Alex 的融资却还是不容易。
What's much more important is an actual something you can point to. So, like, if I had never done the startup podcast, yeah. I think I'd still be pitching. Because you can say all you want, like, I am going to do these things, but until you actually do them, it doesn't become real to somebody. Mm -hmm. So, until I had that first thing out the door, until I had the first episode where they could listen to it and they could see like, oh, that's what it's going to sound like and that's what this guy is able to do. It wasn't until that was that existed that people that people took me seriously. I think on demand audio content yeah. is going to grow. People have been predicting the death of radio for, for 50 <laughs> years, you know, the first time. When TV came along, yeah. people said radio is going to die, and radio didn't die at all. And there's certain things that radio does better than, than what we do. Like, we can't cover a live event. Oh. We can't do, um, we're, you know, like a lot of things that people listen to the radio for, like news, weather, oh, you know, sort of like current events, mm -hmm. uh, foreign, you know, foreign news. Like, I think it would be really, really hard to do, like, a any sort of, like, super current, you know, news-driven podcast would be really hard to produce. Um, and I think that's something that radio will always be better at. Coming up, I make my pitch to Chris. But first, and I'm serious about this, a word from our sponsor. Startup is brought to you by Audible with over 180,000 audiobook titles. I talked with Audible subscriber Yasmin Gokcha, who told me that she has been a subscriber since she was a student in Istanbul. I had like a three hour commute uh, from the Asian side of Istanbul to the European side of Istanbul where my school was. Uh -huh. um, so one and a half hours each way and Audible was a godsend. I loved it. Oh, because when you were saying the Asian side of Istanbul, I was like, oh, that must be like a, an Asian neighborhood or something like that. But no, you're talking oh. about the one that's on the Asian continent versus the one that's on yes. the European continent. <laughs> Audible, improving your international commute. This your show is very honest, and the commercial is very honest as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where did you get the idea? It really just felt like such a, such a, uh, a promotional effort. I didn't really think of it as like mm -hmm. an actual podcast that I was going to do. I felt like it was yeah. like a, a step towards making the company. Yeah. But then once we realized like, oh, there's going to be listeners, mm -hmm. and like we're going to be on This American Life, I was like, yeah. oh, this could have a big audience. Yeah. And then it occurred to me like, oh, well, I, I guess we could make revenue off of this. But it, it really was like that. I had hadn't thought about it at all as like something that we could advertise on. And then once I realized like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get this launch from This American Life, it's gonna be sort of like a bigger audience than I was imagining. Then it became clear like, oh, I should find a, a, a sponsor. We could just like sort of work it into the story. Kind of documentary style ads were fun to do. 除了卖广告, Gimli 拥有200万粉丝群体, 很多人愿意为精彩的节目内容买单. 2015年7月, Gimli正式开通了会员制度, 在免费节目之外，开始给付费会员提供额外咨询和幕后资料。Right now, I think most media organizations are in a, are in a world where like mm -hmm. there's all sorts of different kinds of revenue options available, and like mm -hmm. audience is one of them. But I think what we need to do is sort of like really focus on mm -hmm. providing stuff to our members. Clearly, there's like a there is a significant chunk of our listeners who who want to support us financially. Do you think um, people are is willing to give you money oh, yeah. to listen more? Oh no, we know. Yeah. yeah. Alex,不仅仅是广播明星创业公司老板,生活中他也是一个丈夫和两个孩子的父亲. Your life must be different now. So how different is your life now compared with your life being in PR? It's, it's not that different from yeah. the outside. Like, I'm busier, I work a little bit more on the weekend, I work a little bit more at night. 
So in my old job, I, I would come home and I was like, I was home. I didn't, you know, I wasn't worried about what was going to happen to this American life. Like, those were not my worries. Honestly. Yeah. Um, but now they are. And so now I'm just thinking about it all the time. I think about it all the time. I wake up thinking about it. I go to bed thinking about it. So I'm expecting a baby, too. So okay. And my husband oh, congratulations. wanted to ask questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we are nervous, like, how the life will be. Like, mm -hmm. like the baby, I mean, I have no experience with babies. Yeah. Something uh -huh. even newer than start up, starting yeah. a company or doing reporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it says, how did you manage, manage your life? I will tell you that I'm glad I was not starting a business while we were having the baby. Oh like that's like you that is like, me. yeah. That's that's because I mean well because there is a certain period of time yeah. where you where you yeah, you won't be able to do yeah. anything with the business. Do you think if you can have a chance, you want to start your own company a little bit earlier? I don't know if the time would have been right earlier. Mm -hmm. Like. Like, we started the company at a moment where, like, podcasting is now becoming recognized. It's more of a household name. There's a functional business model now yeah. for it. If I'd started it, lots of, lots of podcasting companies did start in 2004, 2005, and they didn't make it.刚才就和大家呢一起去拜访了一下这个我心目当中呢非常神奇的这个Popcast公司 那可以看到呢，我们媒体人呢，其实呢，有时候只是一种情怀。我们最关心的呢，其实不管科技怎么变化，还是关心到底如何讲故事，如何去表现我们最真实的声音，让我们的观众能够呢，看到我们眼中的